Today I'm going to demonstrate how to help a remote user move from a disabled or a expired or a, a log me in account that's no longer active, such as this remote machine here. Uh, I can't get to the machine anymore because all my machines have been locked out. If I try to re-enable them or get in, uh, log me in wants uh, $300, so I'm not finding a package that really suits my needs. So I'm going to demonstrate uh, one way to move over to TeamViewer. Even if the remote machine has already lost its connectivity through LogMeIn. In other words, you're trying to help someone remotely, uh, maybe a novice PC user, and you're kind of locked out or out of luck. So to move them to TeamViewer is going to require a little bit of work. So on the left, we've got Chrome running here, my admin console, my machines are locked out, and my IP address, I'm on Cox Communications, that's my local internet connection. On the machine on the right, I don't even want to assume Chrome's installed, maybe a parent or grandparent. We use their Internet Explorer, and I'm showing uh, what's my IP address showing. It's on Verizon, so on two totally different networks here. That's the point of this video. Tell that remote user, step one, to go to join.me, J-O-I-N. Not hard to read to them on the phone, to type in J-O-I-N.me and hit enter on the URL line. And they're faced with this interface. Then tell the person to click on Start Meeting in orange and wait a little bit. Imagine, if you will, you're on the phone with this person. You're not actually seeing what's happening, right? So, yeah, you're waiting for a little bit while some stuff happens. If they do get prompted for .NET or any other prereq, you know, go ahead and have them say yes. That's the only way you're going to get to remotely control them. Uh, really, all you're having them now read to you on the phone is this number at the top. So do the same thing on your local machine. Go to join.me and ask the person to read to you the number at the top of their screen, which in my case is 632-075-031. You don't have to type the dashes. And ta-da, you're now remotely controlling that person. Okay, so what we've done here is set up so that we can uninstall LogMeIn, which is now dormant and not doing anything on the remote machine. And you'll notice I don't yet have mouse control. So you've got one other thing to tell the remote person to do. So you want to tell that remote person to click on the participants viewer, which is you, and say share mouse control. Okay. Now the handoff's been made. You can now take it from there and control their machine. So this is good. We're all set. Don't really need the browser interface anymore. Get rid of that window as well. Don't really need that. And you can minimize this. Right click on their start button. By remotely controlling them, right? Click on programs and features. And we're going to want to uninstall Log Me In. Wait for that to finish. Okay, on their local machine, you probably heard a tone there. You can't see this remotely. So this is important to point out. The person needs to be cooperate, uh, cooperating with you. They're going to say, hey, I have a pop-up saying yes or no. You're going to tell them, click yes, please. And now log me in goes away. So you can see there's some little gotchas here that can make it uh, that do make it a little harder to do remotely. Okay, now that that's over with, you can close the item or programs dialog that you no longer need. And now you're ready on that remote machine to get TeamViewer installed. So you go to teamviewer.com. Click the download button. And again, you're on Internet Explorer. Run is simplest. You can do save, save as, and then run. Either way, you do need to trust this executable and run it. Not exactly the best lesson you're teaching the remote user to go ahead and run EXEs, but again, they're trusting you. And you wait a little bit for it to do its security scan. OK, 
Okay, if you say personal non-commercial use, I'll point out that uh, there's no license key. So the free version of TeamViewer is for personal use. And basic installation, eh, not so good. The person has to be at the machine, just like we had with join.me, where the person had to read your numbers. That's not so great for reporting a remote machine where you might want to get into it unattended. So again, you're an admin, the remote person's maybe a novice, this would be a better scenario, installation for unattended use. I don't really need to do advanced settings. I'm trying to keep this video as simple as possible. So now I click accept. Notice the person at the remote machine still has to sit there and wait for you to uh, prompt them. And now that they get challenged with a yes no for team viewer, you have to tell them to click yes with their local mouse. Okay, now we wait. Okay, you get a nice little tutorial here. Okay, it asks about unattended access. So what do we want to call the machine? And we need to set up a password. So by default, it uses the computer's host name. I can hit the tab key at this point and make password for me, their admin to use. Now, I don't want to have you, the viewer, miss any steps at all. So because I don't want you to miss any steps or feel like you missed anything, I'm going to assume you've never used TeamViewer and don't have an account. So we'll go ahead and create an account at this point. A little weird to do that on the remote person's machine. But again, they're not seeing your password or anything. Okay, so this is going to create an account. I'm automatically signed in. And activate it by clicking an activation link. Here's the validation letter. To activate your account, we're going to click the link that was emailed. And my account is now activated. I can use my email to sign in. And I can connect to that machine immediately. So we're actually done with the TeamViewer basic install and creation of account. It's that simple. I want to really test out that I'm good to go. So I'm going to actually log out right now. We have that one machine we set up ready to connect. Now, this is the first time I've used TeamView on this local machine. The setup is a little longer just for this first one. All subsequent connections are very quick and easy. So right here, all-in-one TeamViewer full version download. This is recommended. Click Download. And we'll run the installer once it's done downloading. So this is the admin machine. You may want basic. You may want installation access computer remotely. That's really up to you. And you want to pick personal again. And I noticed it just made an icon on my desk right here called TeamViewer 9. Uh, we can close a little tutorial. Set up and record a password. I already have a TeamViewer account, right? You want to link to the one you already made. And say, keep me signed in. This is, again, for unattended access. So you're trying to create a service or a thing that auto runs when you boot the machine, uh, perhaps, on your admin machine, if you want to trust uh, TeamViewer. All right, you automatically signed in, and it's now added to your list. So two computers now, the remote one and my local computer, me as an admin. 
So we're done with the Gmail interface, and we're done with downloading TeamViewer. So back to this window, download install is now done. And notice you could have avoided installation locally. You could have just done the web client if you want to keep it simple. Uh, but that would be um, presumably a little shorter and less uh, capabilities. I like for the full experience as an admin to remotely connect to multiple team viewer remote machines. So we can pick up right where we left off. Remember I was clicking connect earlier and it complained I didn't have team viewer. Now I have team viewer installed and I'm in. As I move the mouse here in the left, obviously you're seeing minimal lag on the right. It's working. You can dock this little tray icon to have it a little less in your face. Notice the remote machine is still on Verizon and you no longer have a tray icon for log me in, you have a tray icon for team viewer instead. Okay, so you are Done. That remote machine is connected. Its wallpaper goes away when you are remotely controlling them. That's what it looks like when you close your session. The remote person gets a little nag screen talking about uh, money, but that they used it for free. You can actually trigger a reboot of the remote machine. And now it says, what do you want to do? Do I want to automatically reconnect? I'll, I'll click yeah, wait for partner. The service is going to be auto running at start and they don't have to click anything for you to remotely control them. And you can collaborate. They can use their local mouse and you can use your remote mouse. You can help them. Remote desktop is one thing to take over their desktop, but then they don't learn anything. If you're trying to collaborate, that's where uh, team viewer obviously comes in handy just like uh, log me in did. The functionality is very similar. There's wake on land features to wake up a sleeping computer, and um, there's a whole lot more. That would be a more advanced version of this video, maybe a follow-on I'll do someday. But for now, I'm, I think I'm done convincing you that we can easily remotely control a machine and cut over from LogMeIn to TeamViewer using a temporary join.me session. And it now says, hey, it's available to reconnect. I can click reconnect, and ta-da, I'm reconnected right back where I was. If I close the session, they even get their wallpaper back and they can tell you disconnected because they have their wallpaper back and that thing in the bottom right went away. So that's the end of this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. I thank you for watching and for visiting and leaving your comments at tinkertry.com.